up, Boozers? BoozerX here, and we are not going to react to some videos. Today, we're going to do something different, and I don't know how this is going to go, but it could be fun. Instead of breaking down people's games right now and, and doing some booze philosophy, today, we are going to focus on three-bar shooting strategy, and we can apply this to any three-bar series, but I shoot the roller, got pretty good with it, so we are going to do rollover three-bar shooting strategies. And it's going to be like a, a quiz, <laughs> kind of like in school. I will show you guys a problem, and I want you guys to, and we're going to go through it. We'll rewind rewind this a few times, and you guys watch this and maybe post in the comments, or if you don't want to post in the comments, think to yourself, how would I score on this type of defense? So, yeah, I, I just found a whole bunch from some of my videos, and I think I probably broke it down in each one of these videos, but let's string them together here. So I think in this this defense, um, and we got, um, it was Colin Cole going against Ryan Moore. Cole had some fantastic defenses, but this particular series, he changed it up, and he was look at it for a second. Look at this defense. We'll go back. We are trying to, how would we score on this defense? One more time before we start talking about how to score on this type of defense. Okay, so what do we notice first? First, he is not crossing over. He is not going into the reverse. He's staying in the standard. He is not bringing over this guy. So our strategy, or this is my strategy, you guys might have other strategies, we do not want to fall into the, the trap of trying to read all the holes what he's giving. Maybe now he's giving up the push side, and then right when we think about going push side, he, he goes there, and now it's like, oh, now the middle's there, and then we think about going middle, and then he collapses on middle. No, we are not here to read his defense, and you know, as Ryan Moore, he might be the better player, but at any point in time, we might just start falling into traps. So we need to have strategies for certain defenses. And this is one defense that you will see an awful lot. And that is just the standard, no switching. And the strategy we want to go with is pick a corner, usually our best side, and just time it. Because even though he's kind of like moving in and out of here real fast, this is essentially what he's doing. And we've, we've talked about it. He is not moving from the very long hole to the middle. He, he's sort of like shaking and he's on the long hole and then he's in the middle and he's kind of like faking a couple times and he's just in and out. This looks very fast in actuality and we have gone over this. It is very slow. It is boop, 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 boop. So that's what we want to do. That is our strategy for this type of defense and that is what Ryan Moore does. He sees it and he just, he times that pull side right when Colin comes in. Boom. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. So that is one strategy we need to have. When we see this defense, we need to have that strategy. Don't fall into the defense. Don't try to read every hole. You pick one corner and then you wait for it to, for him to fully abandon his positioning, and then you go. So let's go to a different type of defense. What is this one? Oh, yeah, another good one. We will watch it a few times. You guys think about, huh, how would I shoot on this defense? And then we will talk about it. We'll talk about what's happening here. Because this is not the defense that Cole was giving whatsoever. So this is what I will call the slow and smart defense. This is, he is not racing too much here. He is giving um, holes, he is laying traps, he is showing some big holes and he's collapsing. Like this is laying traps and baiting and racing. Well, not racing. <laughs> he's just baiting, um, faking off certain holes, changing up his timing. So I call this the slow and smart defense. And as a shooter, how do we wanna attack this type of defense? Do we want to try to read this entire goal and, and see, all right, what's what's happening 
you know, what hole is being left open the most? Let me let me try to anticipate movements and stuff here. Nope, <laughs> that is not how we want to attack this. We want to pick one hole, any hole we want, and then just wait on it and then explode to the hole. Because we know he is going kind of slow and smart, he is not racing. And if he is not racing, that gives us a tremendous advantage because we know, hey, if, if we pick the right hole, we are going to score this shot. So then all that's left is execution. And when you know he is not going to be bailing out and racing you to certain holes, you just wait for that hole to get really big and he is not going to race you. So let's look at this again. Every hole will be there. It's just a matter of which hole are you pre-picking when you're setting this up. Once you have identified this slow and smart defense, you pick one hole, whatever it may be, and then you just wait for it to get really big. Let's just say, I think, I can't remember what side he hit, but let's just say we're going to look at push. And we're going to take our time a little bit. So it's open. Oh, it's still, it's not really open at all yet. There it is. There it is. There it is. So it did open up. So that's what we want to do. We will pre-pick our hole and just wait for it to get really, really big. And he was probably anticipating other movement here because Cam had Cam like sucked him into his defense here. So when you have this strategy in your head, hey man, I see this type of defense. You don't have to get sucked into jack shit. <laughs> you don't have to get sucked into anything. You dictate things. And, we, and we'll get more later on in this video. We might talk about like a series, but that is the strategy you want to have for the slow and smart defense. All right, let's go to this one. This is Todd at the shooting on, on Steve Biney. So let, first let's look at Biney's defense. What is happening there? This is very, this is much different. This is a lot faster. Check this out again. What's happening here? Well, the first thing we notice is there's a lot of crossovers happening here. So I will call this, I will call this the, the fast crossover defense. He is consistently crossing over his guys, crossing over his men. And so when we see this type of defense, we're, we're setting up the ball and we, we're taking our time. We see somebody going back and forth. They're going into the standard. They're going into the reverse. What we want to do as a shooter is take a step back and see what is happening on the crossover. When they cross it over, are they staying out on the corners? When they cross it over, are they giving up that middle? What is happening immediately following that crossover? And, and that's what we want to start to get a feel for. When he crosses over, is he staying short? When he crosses over, is there a big gap here? So let's look at this again from the shooter's point of view, from, from Rob Atha's point of view. Yeah, when, when, he's, when he is crossing over, he is giving up that middle. Crossover, middle. Crossover, middle. Crossover, middle. And not every time, but for the most part, you know, this is edu educated guess here. And that's exactly what happens. Rob, Rob reads the crossover and he goes middle without even really reading it. He's like, oh, crossover, boom. So that is the strategy we want to have for the fast crossover D. It's not always to go middle. Most of the time, it's that's what's there. But we just want to take a step back again. Analyze, identify what defense are we seeing here? Oh, we're seeing the crossover defense, um, the fast crossover defense. Let us look and see what is happening after the crossover. What is being given up after the crossover? Uh, let's even say like, okay, let's, we want to hit the corners. What is happening after the crossover in terms of the corners? Yeah, it, 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 and it looks like too, hey, when he crosses over with this guy on the reverse, it looks like you can go around that. He might go out there. He might go out there really far once, but then he kind of comes in a little bit, and then he goes out there really far, and then he kind of comes in. So that that's the stuff we want to be looking at. So again, totally different defense, totally different shooting strategy. We will go to this one. Oh, and this is Mr. Scott, yeah not pronounce your name, Steve, is <laughs> Wicks versus Steve. And 
we set up the roller. We will see this defense a lot. It is, I think, is we've already gone over this. We want to identify the defense. And, and pause because I, I was analyzing this in my actual reaction video. So you guys there, you, you guys are having a quiz now. Comment below or think about, hey man, what is the strategy for this defense? Well, first, what do we have to do? We have to identify what's happening here. <laughs> we have identified it by taking our time. And we see that he is in the standard and he's moving very, very fast. This is very much like the first, uh, this was like Colin Cole blocking Ryan. Well, what do we want to do? What are we looking at when we see this? Well, we know that we never have to worry about the crossover. We never know. We know we never have to worry about this second man coming in. So we isolate one corner, probably not the middle, and we just time that corner. Let's, let's talk about this again, guys. We identify the defense. We have identified it to be a standard defense, no crossing over. So we will isolate one corner and we will time it. And just like Mr. Cole and Ryan Moore, this is going very, very fast. And it looks like it's fast. It might be a little intimidating. Like, oh, man, it, it's going very fast. Like, I don't know how to do this. In essence, again, this man is going boop, boop. Boop, boop, but kind of faking off, but then he'll abandon it. Boop, but he's still shaking it fast, but it is slow. So we would just time that. We, we we are looking at the middle of this guy, even though he's buzzing. And when we see that guy come off the hole, we pound that middle or the, that pull side or the push, whatever. But again, we have to take our time a little bit to see what's happening there. Because it could have been he is on the pull side and giving up the push. You know, like we would see that. All right, we know we're looking at this defense. Let's look at both corners. Let's see which one is being given up the most. And this one looks uh, this one looked tougher to time. This one looks tougher to time because he is he it looks like he's out there more. I mean, you can still hit that for sure, but this one was very easy to time the pull side. So that's what we would look at. So again, we see this defense. We identify it. We cycle through our strategies, we figure out how to beat it, and we do. All right, let's go to the next one. What was this? Let's play it out. Let's identify what is happening here. Okay, yeah. This is exactly like Biney's defense, only it's slower. So we'll just call this like the slow crossover. And he sets it up. He is in the standard. He is rocking it for a little bit. And then he crosses over. But where Biney was crossing over a lot, and this guy is not crossing over a lot. So we have to, again, like, we'll, we'll play this out one more time, guys. Notice how this is a completely different defense from what we just saw, that standard that never switched. And this is different than Biney's defense. We have, Biney had this defense, but it was a lot faster. So we have to um, account for that speed. But the same underlying principle is the same. What is happening after the switch? And we want to make sure that he is not switching super fast. So we're, we are identifying... Uh, God, I'm repeating myself, but so what, man? This is how we... This is how we learn through repetition. What is there before the switch? What is there after the switch? And those corners around this, the, the reverse guy, that, that two bar are huge. No matter in the beginning of this, it's huge here. And then when he switches, it's also huge. I mean, he's still, I mean, all holes are going to be there here and there. But for the most part, we are seeing what is happening after that switch. And if we know, hey, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about a second crossover coming. So because we don't have to worry about that second crossover coming, we will just time that hole. And, and that's where it comes in to say like, hey, whereas Biney's defense, we had to make that read really, really fast and kind of shoot as soon as a crossover happened, like, okay, what is happening right immediately after the crossover? 
this is taking our time a little bit to say like, okay, he has made the crossover. We will adjust to just time that corner after the crossover. So let's repeat that. Bynes defense, the fast crossover, we identify what is happening after the crossover immediately, and we'll take that hole. And with this guy, when, when, when we have a slow crossover defense, we wait for him to commit to the crossover, and then we time the hole we want to hit. Makes sense, guys? All right, let's go on to a, a different one. And <laughs> if, if you think you are getting some of these right, I would love to like keep score. Like You guys keep score, and you post your score, your final tally-up score in the comments below. Did you get this strategy right? Or, hey, man, I don't agree with that strategy. I would use this other strategy. But regardless, when you see these types of defenses, you need to have a strategy to beat it. You can't just go in there and be like, oh, let me let me read this D and see what I think he's giving up this time or next time. No, man, you identify what is happening here, and then you have a strategy to counteract it. It's like boxing. <laughs> you see somebody throwing a jab, you throw up a block. You see a left hook, you, you duck. They're... There are actual strategies that you need to be implementing when you see defenses that you've identified. All right, we will go on to the next one. This is Kane blocking surge. First, we want to get a read on what the defense looks like. What is happening here? All right, guys, we're going to do this a few more times. Like, is this something we've seen before? Are these motions? Are, is this the crossover? Is this Bainey's fast crossover? Is this staying in the standard? What, what is this? Is this slow and smart? No. <laughs> I mean, it is smart. It's not slow. So we have to identify what is happening here well i call this defense the stop start you are st you're going on pretty much all three holes and you are you're not really floating in and out you are you're stopping and then you're going to another hole and then you're staying there for a certain amount of time and then you're going to another one of the three holes so it's very much like the stop start kind of motion so now that we've kind of identified what is happening there um, kane is drifting into a hole and he's drifting into another one and he's stopping and these are kind of moving at different speeds, but the motion is the same. It is a stop-start motion, and it's very effective. This is absolutely a defense that you need to learn how to do. But we also, because we we know this is a defense that is out there, we have to counteract this. And how do we do that? I'll let you guys think about this while we watch this stop-start motion. Oh, it, this is very similar to the the slow and smart defense. It, it's not slow and it's not the slow and smart defense. It's like the stop start. So it's a little bit different because you got some really fast motions in there and probably a little bit more baiting. And he and he is racing by by staying still on these holes, he is anticipating that you are not going to shoot there. So when you go into motion, he is racing something. So this is absolutely not like the the slow and smart defense. This is something new that we have not gone over yet. So, but the strategy is almost the same. Hey man, you're doing this. All three holes will be there at some point in the clock. At some point in those 15 seconds, we're going to get a good juicy look at one hole. So we just want to pick our hole. Don't get sucked into his defense because the second you get sucked into Kane's defense, you know, he's going to hook you in and get the block. We want to dictate things. We want to do that. We want to stay in control of what's happening. So we will pick a hole, and I think that's what Serge is doing here. He's like, hey, man, I want to go middle. So I'm not going to anticipate. We are not anticipating the middle. And this is huge because so many roller shooters, when you're getting blocked, it's because, like, oh, man, this hole's about to open up. It, it might be for certain defenses, but on this defense, no, man. We know we have a fast shot, and we know when that hole opens up, it's going to be there for a couple, like a second. So we're not anticipating anything. We are waiting on a, a thing. We are waiting on a hole. Why don't we just take the easy one? Why don't we take the middle? And that's what Serge is doing. He's like, I will wait for that middle to open up to get really big. 
and Kane gives it to him one too many times, and he's just like, boom, yeah. Like, and that's great defense from Kane. Like, let's not talk about anything um, negative about this. That is great defense from Kane, but he just gave up the middle one too many times, and Serge was ready to pull the trigger on that defense. So again, guys, this was a new one here. We will call this the stop start, and you have to have that strategy. If you try to read his defense, you will get sucked in and you will get bricked. So we want to understand, oh, let's identify the defense, go through, cycle through our Rolodex of strategies, figure it out. Oh, this is a strategy I need to use. All right, I will wait on a hole to get really big. And it did not have to be the middle. It, it didn't. Um, let, let's look at the pull side and see how many times that is open. Like, easy. Right there, right there. Right there, right there. So we can go to any hole we want to. The key is we have to pre-pick that hole and not be tempted to fall for those baits. Even though he is he is kind of like staying on the pull side and he's maybe faking off of it. We can't just abandon that and be like, oh, he's on the pull side. I got to go somewhere else. That is, that's when we start falling into that defense's trap, those traps on defense. So good stuff. Let us go to another one. Oh, I am throwing you guys a curveball on your quiz. <laughs> You're like, fuck it. Damn it. Who's Rex? I was acing your quiz, and now I got to do this. Okay. This is a fantastic video. Anybody out there watching this who is below a pro needs to go watch this video. <laughs> you have to go watch this video to see what a series is on each of the rods. Not even just the fibro, but on all the rods. So let's get a look at what's happening here. We are not blocking the three row. We are blocking the five. We are blocking the, we are blocking the brush. We have identified, okay, this is a brush. Okay. <laughs> We're probably going to give up that pass the first time we see it, but we do not ever want to give up that pass again because that is like a money pass. So how do we stop that? How do we... And it is very difficult because this is part of the series. But we know as a as a far wall passer, his wall passes, their wall passes, that's their best pass. They don't usually have a very fast stick pass because of the, the mechanics of it. Um, I mean, you see Tony, I mean, Zeke would probably have that. But in general, it's usually like a fast wall pass. But we would be okay with another thing. So the defense we would want to give to this type of player is to really pretty much stay on that wall. <laughs> like, see David, he is, he is moving this around. No, man, when, when, he's, when he has initiated the toss, then you can kind of go into your motion. But you make sure that toss is, like, he is ready to go from the brush. Other than that, like, you're on the wall. And you're telling him, hey, man, you are not going to get fast walls on me. You're not going to get hesitation walls on me. I mean, you can't just sit there the whole time. You got to come out. But for the most part, you are dictating, nope, I will not let you beat me with any options. If you're going to beat me, you're going to beat me with your brush. So, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's let's go over this again because this is huge because there's a lot of masters out there and, and just a lot of players in general who have, and you need this. You need this pass in your series because this is what keeps your opponent off balance. But as a defender, you have to say, oh, I will make... If you're going to beat me, you can, you can beat me straight up, but you are not going to beat me by keeping me off balance. You are not going to beat me with stuff that I'm not ready for. And, and that's what Vic needs to do. And, and this is, I think this might even be this, the second hesitation wall. So when somebody is setting up, no, nah, man, you stay on the wall until you know for sure that that ball is ready to be brushed. And you, you got to make sure, too, it's not going to, he's not going to go two to the two. But that's what you're doing here. You are eliminating this option from his arsenal, and you're forcing him to beat you with something else. So good stuff. I mean, this is the mentality you have to have. And he might get you the first time, but once you see a player has that very fast wall, or maybe they have another the two the two that they keep working, no oh, man, you take that away and you make them beat you with with just reading and outthinking each other. And Ryan Moore has the same thing on the near wall. He will go. Um, wall automatic and then he has, he's at dirty to the two and so you just you, t you take those two passes away and you force him to beat you with his you know his stick series which i mean he, he probably will but at least you are not giving him 
that freebie to the two every time. All right, we are almost done here. What is this? All right, yeah. This is Robbie. Robbie's defense against the roller on Tony Spreedman. So what do we got to do first, guys? We want to identify what is happening here. We're, we are not reading anything. We want to identify what is happening here. Uh, those are the worst. <laughs> Check it out a few more times. What is happening here, guys? <laughs> Again, man, somebody speak up in class. Why is everybody quiet? Because nobody owes the answer. This is the last one. It's probably the hardest one. What is happening here? <laughs> I'll tell you what's happening here. As a shooter, you have to identify what is happening here. And this is probably the hardest one because everything is happening here. He is doing a little bit of everything. He is not giving you a, a easily easily identifiable pattern. He is not um, doing when he does his crossover motions. It is not a, a pattern that you can pick up on, like Biney or guy who's that other guy, the one against Lee um, Lee Trock. He was giving a slow crossover. Notice when Robbie is crossing over, it is not a it is not something you were going to time. And he's bringing in that second guy. It, this is very random. And, and those like this is not something you were timing. So we can't use the same strategy. And he's also, once he crosses over, like look at this right here. He crosses over, and then now he's in the standard. Right, right here. Now he's in the standard for a little bit. <laughs> and then he goes in the reverse for a little bit. And then, then he kind of like starts bobbing fast. So... He is doing everything here. And, and to me, this is the best defense. Like, this is what I try to do. But, I mean, we'll see. So, this is just mixing in everything, getting in your head, complete mindfuck defense. How do we shoot on this? Well, the first thing we want to do is tell ourselves, do not get sucked into this defense. Don't. <laughs> if you do, you will lose. Because he is he's too good. He's too fast. He is baiting. He's racing. He is he is mixing everything up here. He is showing big holes. And he is he knows he's showing those big holes. So he is racing. So this is not something where you're like, oh, I'll just wait for this huge hole and take my time and crush it. Nope. You. This is where you... Our, our strategy for this is you you pick your hole like the smart defense, like the slow and smart defense. Only instead of just like waiting for it and, and kind of popping it when it's open, we we know they're not going to race to it. We know Robbie will race to that, so we just got to be on our game and to take that shot as soon as we see our hole open. Again, we are not going to fall into his defensive traps if we decide, hey man, I want to shoot pull side. You are not even looking at the rest of the goal. You're not, man. You are not falling into any of his traps, and that makes this that much more easy to read because you're like, hey, man, I am just going to read this one hole, and I know what I want to do is to shoot it the second I see it pretty big. I'm not anticipating anything, and I know if I wait a second before I go, he's going to race that because he knows what he's giving up. I have to have the confidence, and I have to have to have, have, to have the execution to blow up that hole the second I see it very open. Again, we are not anticipating it. That is a trap that a lot of people fall into when they are rushing. Oh man, I think it's going to be open. Nope. And then the other trap we fall into is, well, it's there. I'm going to go. And that's when Robbie baits it. Nope. We have to go in between those two, between anticipation and waiting. We need to take that shot when it's there as, as soon as we see it fully open. So that is our advanced defensive lesson. And we this is a defense that we don't want to see because it's very, very good. But at the same time, we've identified it and we can practice that. And so when you're in pickup games and, and other matches, practice that. When you see a hole, practice on blowing it up as soon as you see it. Don't, don't sit there and wait like, oh, I see this pattern developing. I'll wait for it to get really, really big. No, man, you see it, you go. You start developing that hand speed, that hand-eye coordination to go when you want to. And this is next level shit on your roller. But that's what you gotta have. You have to have a way to beat every type of defense. And this is every type of defense. He's, he's mixing things up really, really well here. And what did I have last? I think this is, we'll see. What are we doing here? We're gonna look at this defense. 
see what's happening. Well, yep. <laughs> we see this dude shaking in the standard. We know right off the bat, well, what do we do? We go to the corners. And I, and I watched a little bit of this match before. This is like the third or fourth possession, maybe. And he has never changed this defense. And right what? Right when he goes, he actually does finally make that change, but it's too late. I mean, that that shot might, should not have gone in. And maybe so. Like, I don't know. Like, I think he blocks it. And this guy's like, yeah, man, that was a good D. That was a good switch. And he just kind of relaxed on the three bar. He's like, oh, I know how to beat this defense. I will just time that pull side because I know I don't have to worry about you crossing over with anything. And then he does. And... It still goes in, but and it was the right read, but the the adjustment came a little bit too late. So, but that's what he's doing here. <laughs> we are reading that. Oh, you're going to stay in the standard? I know how to beat it by going to the corner. So, let's kind of review what we talked about here, guys. Like, why is it... So, okay, so first off, what are we doing here? We are identifying the defense as a rollover shooter... When you set it up, you are identifying what it is that is happening. And then there is a corresponding strategy on how to beat it. Because if we get our, let ourselves get sucked into somebody's defense, they might win a lot of the times. Like, it's going to go back and forth. We don't want that. And if, it, if we're having a bad day or an off night or we start losing confidence or whatever, or they start getting in your heads, they're going to win the battle, even if you've got a really, really good shot. And, and that's why it's so important to have a strategy to, to match what it is that you're seeing. We are not going in here hoping to just outthink somebody. No, man. There is a tried and true strategy to blow up all these different defenses. It's like Mega Man. <laughs> Did you guys ever play that game as a kid? It, it You go through this whole level and you finally get to the boss and you're using your little pea shooter, pea gun to try to kill the boss and you can't. Because it, it's taking away hardly anything from them. But once you have like once you go defeat one boss and he gives you his weapon, when you find the right boss that that weapon kills, it just annihilates that boss. And, and that's what our strategies are doing. You can't use the same strategy for every different defense. You have to have a strategy that works for each one of these. And when you figure it out, it's money. And it will absolutely carry you to the promised land no matter what you're doing. So... What, what do we learn from that? Well, we learned that this is why it is so important to take your time for the first few possessions on your three rod. Because if you, you're quick shooting, you, you haven't given yourself time to understand what's happening from that goalie position. Man, does that make sense, guys? I'll just let this play out. <laughs> you, you haven't giving yourself enough opportunity to understand, hey man, what is happening here? What is this? Are they switching over? Is it timeable? Once they switch, are, are they giving up certain holes? And if you were quick shooting, if you score the first shot, hey man, that's a point, but you got to still at some point take your time to get a read on what is happening here so you can begin to play that meta game. Like, hey, man, I have identified the strategy on how to beat this defense, but you can't keep going to the same hole, can you? No, man, because they're going to adjust. You have to go to that next level. So this is why we have to take our time on the three rod, especially in the beginning. And then, so once we identify the defense, once we start taking our time and we start shooting, what, what happens next? Because we Because like I just said, we can't keep blowing up the same hole, they're going to make an adjustment. So you want to have like kind of this sixth sense of shooting the same hole twice. And then you got to tell yourself, okay, now I will look for a different hole and use the same theory, but I will shoot a different hole. And then I'll go back to this hole for like twice and I'll go middle and then I'll go here. And then you have to, then you can start working the entire hole then you start changing up your timing. And that is how you keep your opponent off guard. Because even though you know, hey man, he is giving up this, this one hole every time on the switch, you can't keep doing that because you have to assume they are going to adjust. And you just have to be aware that you need to adjust first. And we adjust by just picking a different hole, changing up our timing. And so again, what 
What is most crucial in all of this is that we shoot our main shot every single time in pickups, in matches, in all of that. Because it's only through this massive repetition in practice and in, in pickups and games are we going to develop that the knowledge, the experience of being able to identify stuff and when to go and how fast to go. That's the only way. <laughs> that is the only way to master our three rod is by shooting it every single time. And if you are switching shots and if you are throwing in gimmick shots and hit and hope three bars and you're like, oh, I'll go into some kind of pull kick, push kick and hope it's there, it is subtracting away from your experience because you need to get blocked. You need to understand how to adjust, how to punch and counter punch, all that. You know, our goal is to get to the highest level as soon as possible. And we can't do that if we are doing other shit on the three bar. And it, there's this, so we just have to maximize our opportunities to process what is going on up here. And the only way we can do that is by doing it every time. And there's like this learning curve that we all go through when we start playing where we're, we're a rookie and we suck balls and we start getting a good shot and it starts going up and we're like, oh man, I'm scoring on people. I'm scoring on people better than me. My shot's getting really, really good. But what you, those people don't realize is you're scoring good because you are not picking the right holes. <laughs> and, and you're probably wondering, no, man, I'm scoring because I'm getting good. And I put in the practice. Nope. You are scoring on pro players or expert players that are have been playing years more than you because you are not picking the right holes. And you're not falling for the right traps. You are not reading the defense the correct way. And that's why you're scoring. And then people think, oh, my three row is good enough. I'll I'll pick up the pull. And then they start doing the same thing with the pull. Their pull gets really, really good. And they're just like, damn, I got two badass shots. I will start switching anytime I feel like it because I got two really good shots. Nope, you don't. <laughs> and this is next level shit. And this is just one of my philosophies. If you disagree, that is okay. This is just what I believe. There is a, a, a learning curve and it starts to flatten out. Like once you start to get better, your foosball IQ gets to get gets it gets better. You start reading what the defense is giving you. You start seeing the game at the same level as the better players. And when you do that, because they are better players, they start shutting you down. They start bricking you. They start locking up your three rod because you're you're seeing the game how it's supposed to be played. You're finally at that level. And when you're at that same level as somebody who's been playing 20 years, of course they're going to own you. And, and so how do we do that? How do we break through? Well, we break through by just break, like plowing through that learning curve and just keep shooting it the same shot over and over again. This is why we do not ever want to switch shots from pull to roller. And you can do that. You can do this when you're a master. You can do this when you have absolutely mastered one of your shots. You know, this is why you see, see Brandon Moreland shoot you know, pulls and rollers because he went pro shooting nothing but a pull. You know, he had mastered the pull. He's like, ah, I will master a different shot. But if you are expert and below, and I, I would say even some pros out there who have pretty good, really good three bars, but it's not at the master level where they're scoring every time, it's because they, they're switching shots. They're, they're shooting other shit. They're, you know, showboating. They want to be flashy and they enjoy playing the game that way. And that is great, man. It is absolutely great. But just know your three bar will not reach that master level unless you are shooting it every single time to the point where you, anytime you go up against somebody, you are able to identify, okay, what is happening here on that defense? How do I beat it? Oh, you're giving me this defense. You're giving me defense A, defense A. I will go with strategy A. I see that you have now switched up to defense C. I will go with strategy C. And again, this is why it's so important as a defender you cannot have just one or two different defenses. I have a video out there on all the different types of defenses. You need to be able to rot that, rotate that in there every possession, two or three times, you know, put in different defenses. You know, every possession, throw in a different set of two or three different defenses. And that's what Robbie does. And that's what the best players do. That's why, and that's what Colin Cole was doing on Ryan Moore. <laughs> um, you, you, you can do that. You don't have to be the best player. You just have to have that knowledge of, hey man, I have to throw up something different Every single time, I have to rotate defenses within that possession. Otherwise, the best players will get a read on that. So, good stuff, guys. That was a little something different. I hope I did. Hope I helped some people out and opened your eyes to 
what needs to be happening on your three rod. Have a good one.